Windows 8 is the biggest opportunity for developers in history, and games are the most commonly downloaded app. If we put Windows 7 in a blue circle, you get an idea of how big that is compared to other marketplace opportunities. This is just huge. Hi, I'm Davis Bitsky, and I want to show you how your game can be one of the most downloaded apps from the Windows Store. I'm going to show you how to create your own game by talking about game design principles, creating a game flow, and you'll be able to download plenty of sample code. You won't even have to learn a new language, and who has time for that? Windows 8 lets you use JavaScript and HTML, your existing skills, to write an app the way you've always written an app. Truly, it's the web come to play in Windows. Windows 8 really is the biggest opportunity for developers in history. So if you haven't already installed Windows 8 in the developer tools, download them now. We're all familiar with common game elements like menus, scores, achievements, and settings. Windows 8 can light up your game with so much more. It has support for modern sensors, including gyroscopes, accelerometers, and GPS. New technology, like share and device contracts, make games more social and able to easily integrate with nearby devices. You can also create a trial version of your game. The Windows Store makes it easy to offer a free trial without writing any code. It's the best way to increase conversion rates. Your game also gets exciting support for different types of player interaction, including touch, pen, keyboard, and mouse. This opens a world of possibilities, like a drawing game that allows new words to be entered with a keyboard. But first, we're going to look at design, the foundation for an appealing game. Making a game can be a lot of fun, but without a good design behind it, any game will leave a player feeling frustrated. Game design is one of the most important steps you'll take in your journey to the Windows Store. Rest assured, your game won't be the only game in the store, and grabbing a user's attention with great design could mean your game quickly rises through the ranks. Whatever the type of game you plan to create, remember, it will also determine the amount of work you will have to do. Resist the urge to create something complex, like World of Warcraft, and focus on something you can do really well. That will get you recognized in the Windows Store. Blizzard's reputation as a game developer started out small, with Warcraft, a simple strategy game. And over the years, they grew into the most popular game developer in the world. Start small and make a really great game. Your reputation will only grow as you continue to delight fans. Now let's focus on your game's objective. What is the player ultimately striving towards? What are the gameplay elements that will enable them to get there? These will become the features of your game. What type of engineering elements do you want to incorporate into your game? Do you need a physics engine? Will you be rendering in 2D or 3D? Let's take a look at Solitaire, a game everybody knows. Even Solitaire has been updated with the Microsoft design style in Windows 8. You'll see I have the ability to go through menus, which I can move back and forth with both mouse and touch. If I select a new game of Solitaire, you can see these cards are giving a nice shadow effect. As I move these cards around, that shadow moves over the other cards. When I let go of this card, you can see the physics engine behind the game. Does this card bounce back into place, or does it just fall? Does it hit the other cards? Let's look at a 3D game. As I load up Pinball FX, you will see this is a game that utilizes different rendering styles across the game. So I can click my mouse, or use touch to fire off the pinball. I can use a keyboard if I want to control the paddles. You can see some 2D elements at the top right of the screen as controls, while the pinball machine itself is rendered in 3D. All of these elements you will need to think about when creating your own game. You also need to think about your game's graphics, sounds, music, and animations. All of these are extremely important to the enjoyment players will get out of your game. Here's a little tip. When it comes time for creating the music, sound, and graphics for your game, here are a couple free tools I used in creating my own games. The first tool I used was for my sound and music files. Audacity is a free tool you can download off the web, and you can use it to modify sound files. In the Win8 Game Kit, I recorded my own voice, and then I modified its pitch. To see an example of what we can do, let's open up the Sounds folder in the Win8 Game Kit, and we're going to use the New Level MP3 sound file. New Level! You can see how we have a view of the entire audio track. We can modify the sound file in many different ways. What I'm showing here is just the pitch level, so let's go ahead and change that to be much higher. You can imagine your own game where you may have the need for a deep robotic voice or maybe a high-pitched laser beam. 
You can do all of that in Audacity and then save the files back out in various formats. The second tool I used is something called Paint.net. Paint.net gives you a lot of capabilities you see in professional graphics editing programs, but it's free. One of my favorite things it gives you is the magic wand. A lot of times an image you may get off the web or in some form of clip art has that solid white background. This is usually a sign that the image was saved without a transparency channel, for example, like a JPEG. What we can do with the magic wand is click on that background and then just delete it. Then we can save it out as a PNG file, which will keep that transparency. The last tool I used is Expression Design from Microsoft. Now, Expression Design is not a free tool, but it does offer a free trial if you want to check it out. This example is the Win8 Game Kit's load screen and the main menu logo. What I did was I took a Starfield image as a background, and then I added some fonts to it. I've got two different pieces of text that you can see, Space and Cadet. I'm using a free font I got off the web called Final Frontier, but I can change this font to whatever I want. Let's change this to Sego, and you'll see now it has more of a Microsoft design style feel. I can also add different effects. So these are three tools I use in my own game that'll hopefully help you in your game when you need to create sounds and images. Frameworks can help you focus more on your game's design and less on the engineering. Luckily, there are plenty of third-party frameworks and tooling built around HTML5 gaming that you can take advantage of in your game. Frameworks such as EaselJS or ImpactJS are two great resources to check out. Now that you understand the scope of your game and the engineering and graphical assets behind it, you'll work on the flow. What do you want the first experience to be for your player? Are they met with a menu? Do you see a running game in the background? How do they progress through the screens within the game? As you can see in the flowchart, the game is laid out in a way that combines the screen along with where you'll need to draw elements. Then check for user input and make calculations with your game engine. The game loop is also incorporated here. The most common way to render a game is to have an update draw loop that renders objects on screen over time. For example, in JavaScript, we would have two different functions, one called update and one called draw that will be called numerous times each second. This is the way we render images to a screen over time. And don't worry, we'll go deeper into this topic in week two. Here's another tip. If you're like me and you just want to get going, but you don't want to start from scratch, download the Windows 8 Game Kit. It's the source code for a Windows Store game developed using HTML and JavaScript, and it's free. The game includes a functional game loop and technologies like HTML5, Canvas, audio, CSS3 styling, and then touch and device access using the camera and the accelerometer. That's it for now. We've looked at the importance of creating a great game, which may mean starting small. I covered the flow of a game, and I shared some tips I learned when creating my own game. Next week, we'll take a closer look at the different development technologies available to you. We'll look at the app lifecycle and dive deeper into the game loop, animations, and sound. Remember, check those daily tips at the Windows Dev Center website for deeper information on making a great Windows Store game. You can develop a game in 30 days with the tools you already know how to use. So what are you waiting for? Start designing your game.